Howdy everybody in YouTube land. Heck, I can't even get this in the frame. Uh, what we have in front of us today here is another luggable computer. This one, and my camera's freaking out at the moment, this one is badged as a GE Fanuke Workmaster 2, which is a industrial automation company, I think. Well, the reality is this is just a rebadged IBM Model P70 386 luggable, which I actually have one of these, the, the IBM version of this, but I don't think I got any video footage of it because I worked on that. Oh, I had to buy, I had to buy two, well, no, I take that back. I had one, but I had to buy a parts machine on eBay that was all beat up, missing pieces, keys were broken. And the keyboard cables rotted out. And between the two machines, I made one good one because mine, the hinges were bad. I took the hinges off and I sent them to someone to try to make 3D printed replacement parts and try to fix it. This has been a decade ago. I never got the hinges back. So my display was missing the hinges. So it sat apart in pieces for the last better part of a decade. So I got the hinges off the parts unit plus i needed a couple of key switches and some other odds and ends and made one good one and i still have some of the parts left over on the other one um and fast forward a couple of years i got this guy now i picked this one up at vcf east of this year and this wasn't a consignment sale or anything like that this was a direct to sale and i don't know the history of it he said he picked it up and there was an issue with the hard drive and all the other typical stuff, but I don't know the details outside of that. And it was kind of expensive and I probably won't keep it. I'll likely end up selling it on just because of the fact it was so expensive. Um, it was over, tw <laughs> this thing cost over twice what I paid for my original P70, you know, 11, 12 years ago. But yeah, that's the price of retro today. Anyway, so I figured it's good for video content. We'll just get it all fixed up and get it working and then possibly move it on down the line. So most likely this is going to be up for adoption. Um, I'd like to get out of it what I got in it, but we can get to those details later. But for now, let's take a look at it and see what we got. First thing right away is we're missing a foot and this thing's closed all the way, but it's broken. So we've got a broken latch. This one appears to be grabbing, and it's present. So we have a keyboard. Ooh, it's filthy. And it's kind of... That's weird. I don't remember it being that flexible. At least not my P70, anyways. So that that key switches. It's mechanical. Mechanical key switches. Yeah, on mine, this was broke, and I had another one that was broke. I had to use keys off the parts keyboard. To get it together so i have a parts keyboard which is the white one which i can probably replace this latch but it's going to be the wrong color um but in fact because i can see it here and i can kind of see it all over this case especially here this thing was painted anyways this was probably the original white beige shot p70 chassis that they spray painted because when every every time it gets scratched like here it reveals the white base plastic so this is definitely a um painted case anyway so i can probably paint the replacement latch here when i get it off the parts keyboard but it says do not dismantle scrap or remove uh power switch clunkinator got the GE Workmaster logo there. It's got some the panel. The hinges look like they're holding on this one at least compared to mine. Mine still kicked out a bit even though I tried to replace the parts on it. Oh, we're missing the door. Which I actually have the door, but it would have to be spray painted to match. I don't know the condition of the floppy drive or the hard drive or any of that. But if it's like any other PS2 floppy drive, it's probably got bad capacitors. So, why don't we take the back off and see what we got going on on the inside. And anyone who's watched my channel as long as I've been producing videos, I typically don't like to just 
plug things in and turn them on unless I know what I'm dealing with. Since this is unknown, I want to pop the back off and see what's going on at the moment. So, um, now one thing I noticed right away is the standoffs are missing for the ports. So someone has clearly been in here, which is to no surprise. So what I don't know yet is what to expect inside this thing. Also, I don't remember where all the screws are, so I'm probably going to have to pull this back and face it down. Okay, there's a screw here. And it looks like whatever is in there, so someone stole a hard drive. It's missing. And since this was a GE fan, you get chances are the company that sold this on took the hard drive out, which means this thing is likely missing the hard drive. So, and then this screw here goes into the power supply, if I remember correctly. Yes, it does. And what I don't remember is how this thing comes apart. The last thing I want to do is just start prying on a... Yeah, there we go. Oh, that scared the crap out of me. Alrighty then, well, he left me with no RAM. Um, we're missing wherever the world that went to. Oh, this thing's a dumpster fire. So, it's basically a parts unit at this point. I mean, I gotta fix it. This thing costs too much money, but yeah, it's missing everything. Got a power adapter there, or power cable routing, which is not in its hole. That's where the hard drive would have been. Not anymore, though. I don't know where it went, but it's gone now. This is all being ripped off out of here. Oh, boy. Well, that screw's missing. This went who knows where. There's a screw missing there. That's probably, matter of fact, that's where it went. Yep. Somewhere around those lines. So this thing's... Yeah. Anyways, so that's been taken apart. Which, I gotta look in my stash and see if I saved the screws from my parts unit. The RAM is proprietary. You have to use the actual IBM P70 style RAM. Um, which I think I still have some, but I don't remember. There's the battery, which I actually have to replace this battery because if you don't, it won't hold the settings even during a warm reboot to store the, the, um, Micro channel card configurations and stuff like that. Yeah, see, we got a screw missing here too. This whole this whole back plane's been out, and the screws to it are gone. Wow, look at this. Yeah, that sucks. So, this thing's missing a bunch of stuff. And to think this thing was two hundred bucks, and it's missing everything. Okay. At least we know what we're working with. Fan. Uh, I'm just trying to think. Should I just plug it in? Go for broke? At least I don't see anything that's concerning enough to prevent me from plugging it in. I'm sure the floppy drive doesn't work anymore because that's fairly common so we have that we've got ram we've only got one ram stick i don't know if that's enough for this machine to run but let's see there's there's a hard drive well i don't know there's two hard disk connectors here 
because the floppy drive is over here, so that's not that. Why is there two hard drive connectors? HDA and HDA. That's strange. But hey. Well, let's see what we got back here on our tags. It's kind of scary what's missing here. But, you know what? Let's spin this guy back around. I'm not going to plug the keyboard in right now because I just don't care. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the power cord, which is back here. And we're going to plug this thing in. Because at this point, we don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if this power supply has reefers or not. I don't remember. Here we go. Dead. Does not work. Oh, wait a minute. Wow, you can see the burning. Counting RAM. Access the floppy drive, at least try to. But all right, yeah, the plasma panel has this okay thing burned into the screen when I first turned it on. Do you see that? So what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and turn the power back off and back on. Yeah, you can kind of see it burned in right there. This this thing's got all kinds of burn in. Which might not be a bad idea or a bad thing because I think I have a spare panel that I can put in here. But for the price I paid, this thing is in rough, rough condition. I almost feel like I overpaid at this point. But enough complaining. Um, the good news is the motherboard works. All of the major components work. Because the parts unit that I got that I fixed the first P70 didn't work at all. So I'm already a step ahead. And I paid, it's like 70 bucks for my parts unit. So, alright, uh, floppy drive appears to try to function. But I don't know if it works. So the drive is likely going to have bad capacitors because I almost always do. So let me go get the keyboard connected and let me go get a boot disk and we'll see what happens we'll just just out of curiosity what happens all right so my phone's going off um so i got my discs out here for a second So now, once this thing fires up, we can figure out if this floppy drive actually works. It probably doesn't. God, that burn in's bad. Can't skip the RAM test. At least it has two megabytes. Kind of. Yeah, we know. Reboot. Let's see what it does. Ah, 
Actually, it's trying to read. I think the hinges are broke too, because I can see the display sagging on that corner. No, that is a negative. Let's try this one. I can see the disc spinning. It looks like it's going the right speed. Uh, yeah, I don't know if this is a bad floppy drive problem or if this is something else. Now, these drives are notorious for capacitors to go. Oh, actually, no, there it goes. It's just running extremely slowly. That's actually cool. It's reading the disk. That is awesome. That means I can proceed working on this thing some more. This is the P70 disk I use that boots my other machine because it's got the SCSI drivers. Because my other machine has a SCSI card because it too had a bad hard drive and it, it's becoming a problem because the ESDI hard drives that are direct bus attachment, they're all failing. And there was no solution for storage on any of these old microchannel systems. So it's like, what do you do? You know? It's a PC, I can run dir. I don't even know what's all on this disk. And it's got the power SCSI hard drive, hardware, hard drive, hardware, drive controller stuff. So, yeah, and that's the problem. There's no storage unit or solutions for this. Up until recently, there's a product that came out this year called MIC IDE, which is a microchannel based XT to IDE, it uses the XT to IDE BIOS, and it's a microchannel based IDE storage solution. So, we can finally bring things back to normal with this. So this contains my zip disk driver. It is working. Yeah, it's all good. No. Not what I want to do. Alright, so... Okay, we know the floppy drive is good, although I do need to take it apart and inspect it for the capacitors and grease it and all that fun stuff. So I got it's got to come apart anyways, but... It works, and the machine works, so I can continue on with it, the restoration. I've got to figure out what I want to do next. So let me dwell on that for a minute, and then I'll bring you back. I went ahead and got the screen completely out of the way, because all these are busted off and need replaced anyways. So I'm not surprised there. Um, but that's out of the way for now, until those parts come in. But then, I took the floppy drive cover off. And this one does not have the leaking capacitor surface mount stuff going on that most of them do. Which explains why this floppy drive worked right out of the box. Caps are still original. They're not showing any signs of leakage. And they're not um, surface mount. So I'm inclined to leave this guy alone because it is working. Now, what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to check on the top side, especially this board here, and see what we got in there that might need attention. Outside of that, I don't see anything that I need to do this drive besides basic service, like greasing and cleaning and stuff. That's always a plus. The less work, the better. 
So I got the floppy drive out and I took the lid off. So I'm taking a closer look at this. And there's no surface mount electrolytic capacitors on this. And there's two caps back here, but they're not leaking. So I'm inclined to leave this one alone. I'm probably just going to lubricate the stepper motor, clean the heads, and call it a day. So that's the drive that lasts for practically forever. Now this is a this is a Matsushita drive or Panasonic, and um, I noticed also the display screen, the, pa the the plasma panel is also Matsushita. So I'm beginning to wonder if this whole machine was made by Matsushita for IBM, like this is a Panasonic machine. It wouldn't surprise me. So. Anyways, this floppy drive is fine. That's why it worked right off the bat. So we're going to uh, just do the basic maintenance and we're going to put it back together. Now, putting this thing back together is going to be fun because this, trying to get this plug in is extremely painful because you can't really get in there. So I'm in the process of putting the floppy drive back together and I get it all together and it just won't really stay latched so i tore it all the way back apart and guess what the finger on this latch is broken too ah brittle plastic disease i can't find the other piece to this anywhere in here so it must have been broken from the beginning so i'm gonna have to go and see if i saved that part from my other machine that i parted out a couple years back because that I don't know. Let me find out. Alright, so went through my junk bin and there we go. I have another one to replace the one that is broken. See, this is why I don't throw anything away. Well, I don't say anything. I do throw some things away. But before I got rid of the parts P70, I took everything off of it that I could have potentially used. So the only thing that went out to the trash was this shell. That's it. Um... And for good reason, because I never would have thought I would have ever needed that. But yet, here we are. Now, the unfortunate thing is, the parts keyboard, both clips are broken on it. Whereas this, because I don't, I don't have one to put in it. So, what I'm probably going to need to do, is I need, I'm probably going to need to take like, this broken one or something, and possibly cut it up and try to fabricate something because it will stick in there barely but it does so that makes me want to see if I can just like take a Dremel tool or something and cut this plastic up and make new clips little dongly do sticking out of the end of the clips I don't know if I can do that yet or not but in the meantime I now have the part to go ahead and put into this floppy drive bay here like so and that should solve my problem now the screws that I'm missing um I forgot I just kind of dumped them all into this tin before I left so they're all mixed in with everything else so I'm gonna have to go through there and see if I can find the screws that I'm missing from this to see if I actually have them because I think I do and that should do it just gotta be careful and there it is. Just got to be careful with this because of the brittle plastic. So that means in theory, should be able to put the floppy disk in there. Close it or reopen it. Take the floppy disk back out and then close it. We're good. All right, so moving right along. I can't do anything about this right now until those parts come in. But what I can do is I can actually replace the plasma panel with another one. Actually, while I was putting the screws in, I wanted to stop myself for a second because if I put all the screws in, it'll be harder to put a card in here. So now this right here is the MIC IDE card that will bring you XT IDE support on the micro channel architecture. Thank God this project came out. Unfortunately, it is closed source, closed design, so take that for what you will. 
Now, unfortunately, also, I noticed something right away. I'm trying to put this card in. This card won't fit over here because it hits this fan. So that won't work. Th this section here is only good for a short card, a short board. But perhaps worse is I'm trying to put it in here. But look, the key lines up, but we're short a few pins up there. I don't know. I don't know if that is a good thing or a bad thing. I'm kind of afraid to plug it in there and let the magic smoke out until I do a little bit more research because micro, the micro channel architecture is not exactly my knowledge scope. So I don't know um, what to think about that in the moment. The more I'm looking at this thing, the more that I'm thinking it's normal because if you look at this slot, well, that slot seems, seems to line up to where this is where the card is, I should say, while this slot goes over a little bit. So that might actually be normal. But what's not normal is this reproduction blue um, chingus. It doesn't quite fit because it's got the board warped and it won't push all the way in. So the board's a little bit off kilter, but what are you gonna do, you know? So, all right, at this point, I'm gonna grab my other plasma display and I'm going to wire it in here and we're going to test this monstrosity and see what happens. Alright, so I got this screen just kind of like sitting in there at the moment. So, um, cards in there. Let's see if we get any magic smoke. No overheating. Um, that ain't good. Nope. That is not good. So why did that occur? Well, let me pull this card out. Because, yeah. Don't know if that actually is good. Try again. Yay, no burning. All right, this one's perfect with no burning. So I know the display is good. I can use that to swap out with the other one. And then we'll have a good display in here at least. But it's kind of unfortunate that the card doesn't work. At least not in that slot. Keyboard error, count bad date and time, battery dead error. Okay, so we're good there. Uh, but for some reason, you know what? There's a lot of dust in here. That might be might have something to do with it too. again hey it worked this time So there we go. It didn't freak out. Now I'm going to need the reference disc and I'm going to need the option disc for that card. But I'm also got to fix the battery before I do any of that because it's not going to retain the configuration if, uh, if I don't replace the battery. So. Okay, what are you doing? Yeah, oh, there we go. All right. It's not detecting the misconfigured card, but it may not until 
um, I get an option disk in there or reference disk in there because I don't I don't know the way the microchannel architecture works but that's where we are right now so let me go ahead and get my disks prepared and get um, something I forget my brain just went blank all right I got the p70 reference disk in there and I copied the uh, MIG IDE ADF file option file onto that diskette so it should pick this card up if if things didn't get blown up anyways we'll see it's thinking about it I noticed this machine's a little pokey trying to get DOS loaded. Don't know why. There we go. Enter to continue. Yeah, I know. We'll see what happens. Oh, it may complain because I haven't replaced the battery yet because I don't have one of those types of batteries. Hopefully it loads the XT IDE BIOS. We'll see. Maybe. That's a no. Oh, yep, yeah, there it goes. There it is. Interesting. ROM boot. That's kind of cool. You know what? This thing, I think it supports. Oh, you know what? This thing supports a serial flop or a serial boot or something. We can boot from a serial port. Uh, no, that's not what I had in mind. But hey, the IDE card has been detected, and this is now my option disk. I need to write that down. So, um, okay. Uh, now we need to move on, and the next step to this is getting the parts. To fix the hinges and swapping the display. All right, now that we know the machine actually works, I got the display panel removed right now. And through the magic of time, space, and whatever else mysteries lie within this universe, we now have a group of parts. So this, let's see, there's some weird... I'll have to deal with that in a second. So there's we've got some screws in there. We've got some foam. And now we have this. So luckily, this is probably the instruction. Alright, so here we go. Let's start here. Thanks for your purchase. Instructions should help you get your P7075 screen back to working order. Replacement hinges at EG, although it does take a bit of time because the machine has to be completely disassembled, blah, 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 blah. So, it looks like, if I remember correctly, what it looks like here is we have to drill out those rivets. Install the U-cup. And heavier spring into this position. So if you want to read this, you can pause this video. Because I don't want to make the video much longer than it has to be, but let's see. Spring set, touch a small spring to come. Blah, blah, blah. 
Oh, yeah. That's okay. Okay. So before I can even work on these hinges, I need to get the other parts loose from the screen, which is here and here. But since I have to take the screen apart to get that anyways, I might as well just go ahead and swap the panels around so I can get the less burning one in, in over there and get that one out. Um, but I'm getting ready to take this apart and I forgot about this security bit set. I mean, I have the tools to remove it. I'm not worried about that, but I'm just trying to think in my mind why. Uh, was that a product of the era? Like, I, I, I'm curious if any of you all know that, but I'm just curious to know if if there was something about the 80s where you couldn't get those bits because they're just about everywhere now. Maybe these were patented at one point and now the patent's expired. I'm honestly curious because I don't know what... Anyways, before I go off on a tangent... Oh, I got to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of those parts out of the way and get things swapped around. That way I can actually work on these hinges. All right. So this is the screen I want to use. And if you remember, it had some like flickering in the picture a little bit. Um, so I decided to take a quick look and yep, we've got caps in here, but perhaps worse. What we got going on here? There's a little bit of green fuzz there. There's a little right there there and this one over here is really bad see that right there so yeah these guys are leaking so i'm gonna have to change all of those capacitors before i put the screen back together um the high voltage caps don't look so bad it's the rest of these that do but i gotta see what i have in my stash i don't know if i have any spares i'll have to look and see but uh yeah we're gonna have to pull this apart and we're gonna have to change the caps in that board in order for us to continue. Well, unfortunately, due to my short-sightedness of wanting to get this project done and off the table, I forgot to get these two. So, I do not have them, but I don't see any signs of leakage, unlike the other ones, but I did get these two, and all the rest of them are done. So, uh, yeah, they're kind of fugly, but they're, you're not gonna see them anyways. They're gonna be buried behind this shield. So you're not even going to notice. So anyways, for now, I'm going to go ahead and get this project over because I want to get this thing off my bench and move on to the next thing. But before I can, this had to be done. All right. So I got the display put back together now. I don't have the hinges done yet. So I'm going to do those next. But look at the difference. You see how white that inner base plastic is? Caps are in there, but you can't hardly see them. But then look at the one I pulled out. That yellowing is just from heat not uv exposure see there's a huge difference there so it's like this machine which i guess considering the target market it was designed for has got a billion hours on it it's got so many hours on it it's crazy and the other thing is is in the right light you can definitely see the text burn in you can you can see that the dark spots there that are just like line by line yeah, that's literally pretty... Yeah, you could see the highlights. Where I don't know exactly what was on the screen, but there's quite a bit on there that's burned in. So this display, even though it does work, it's not going to be useful for my purposes. So that one's in there. I mean, I'd hate to throw it away because, well, knowing me, I don't really throw much away anyways, but I'd hate to throw it away because what if something, a chip or something shorted in there, then where am I going to get a replacement plasma panel? Therein lies the problem. So it's like, yeah, this is severely burned in. But a one, that bur one that's burned in that works is certainly better than one that's nice but is, is beyond repair. So I think I'm going to put this in my spare parts bin and just leave it alone and then get rid of the... Um, plastic that that came out of so i won't keep the black pla or the white plastic i won't keep that but everything else i'm going to hang on to and then we got to fix that all right so i got this one drilled out it popped out it went in fairly fairly decently so i just got to put the screw in and then i was drilling this one out and i've started to drill that one out and i'm like oh crap i only need to drill one out 
So I got the one drilled out and then I'm going to get that all back together. But I'm waiting for this battery to charge because it ran dead on me. I've not charged this battery since probably September of last year and it's now May. So it tells you how often I used it. And the thing is, it's a 2018 battery. This is about when I bought this thing. And this is probably the third time I've ever charged this drill. So it lasts a very long time. So anyways, it's charging because it died on me. And once I get that done, I'm going to work on to the next hinge. But for now, this is where we are. Now I just got to get this together. And trying to get the spring into the new hinge assembly is going to be fiddly. I'm going to have to figure that one out. And just like that, the hinges are done. So the screws are in there now. That one's a little bit quirko twinkulated, but there's not much I can do about that. I'm just going to have to hope that it stays in there. If not, I'm going to have to put a screw in there, but we'll see. Um, but for now, these two screws are in, the new pieces are in, and these springs are incredibly difficult to get in there. This is under very high tensile strength, and that's why those broke. It's not that this plastic is brittle, because this plastic is actually very pliable and strong. It's broke under tensile strength. Now, these are basically junk. Now, I'm not going to throw them away, okay? And you'll see why in a minute. But there's a reason why I've got all these pieces up here. Now, for now, the hinges are done. So, I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity to get them bolted back to the screen and then get the screen mounted in there. And uh, we'll take care of that. But everything is all in place. And that's what it's supposed to look like. And there we have it. So the screen is now installed. So that means in theory, I should be able to open this guy somehow. Well, I think you need both hands to do it, but I do not have both hands. So there we go. And it's not really doing it very well. I mean, it's, yeah. Point is, it is working. Alright, so this keyboard is an absolute pain in the ass to take apart. So, there's like 400 clips that go all the way around the edge here, but perhaps even worse is there's clips that go down the side here. Now, what I did was, in order to figure that out, so what I did was I pop the back of it off first and then at the edges so there was tension on this and then from one end I guess it doesn't really matter which end you pull these keys off but you can see little divots in here so you grab a pair of forceps and you get in here like that and you squeeze on the clip and pull up and it will pop loose so I did that to all the clips so all these clips here have popped loose and then the front is super hard to get out because it's caught in between this bar. So it was really, really hard to get out. But, oh, what a pain in the ass design. So I got that out now. And the reason why, let me set that aside, is I need to clean this thing. For one, because it's the keys are like nasty as hell. So this keyboard is all going to have to be taken apart and cleaned. But not only that, so over here we have a latch. Well, this one sticks out and works fine. It's not broken. All right. But that one is broken. So remember how I said I didn't want to throw this plastic away here? So grab all this crap and get out of my way. So I didn't want to throw this plastic away. Right? Well, here's the reason for that. I can trim this plastic up because it's the same exact plastic. And it, like I said, this plastic's not brittle. So, even though I thought it was, it's just too much tensile strength and it breaks. So, this plastic is good. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that little piece there. I'm going to snip it out of there. And I'm going to glue it on this end here. That way, I have a peg that will come out like this one does on that end. So, that I'm hoping will fix my problem. So I have at least one good latch. Because at least one good latch on this side, I can take measurements 
and then cut this piece apart and glue it down here. And that's a good way to reuse that old hinge plastic is to fix your latches that are broke. So that is what we are going to do with this keyboard. So there's my good one. I chopped all those little pieces up. And I got it all glued in with my plastic struck to plastic weld stuff. And we're all it's gonna have to cure. It ain't perfect. A little bit thinner than it was originally. But it has a tongue on it now, so I can close the keyboard and it should stay closed and not flop open anymore. So we're gonna let that cure overnight, and we'll be back in the next morning. All right, so here we are the following day, and I'm hoping that this thing has dried. It's not wet anymore. And yeah, that worked really well. So, all righty then. Okay, well, we're gonna have to try that again, or we're gonna use a different I don't, the plastics may not be exactly the same because it looks like the glue just broke right off at that joint. There's no evidence of glue left. So that makes me wonder if that's the wrong type of plastic. We'll have to see. Unfortunately, the bad news is this plastic here, which I just tested it on here, this plastic here is not ABS because that's where this came from. I don't know if this is polystyrene or what kind of plastic this is, but this is not ABS. Um, because that's why it didn't look like it actually melted the end here. It just looks like a clean break. Now, this stuff is ABS because you can see where it's melted. So that is ABS. That is not. So can't use this stuff even though I tried and I was thinking I could I can't I need to get another piece of ABS from something else to bond onto that huh wonder where I'm gonna find something like that well beggars can't be choosers but I finally found a piece of compatible plastic I think this was an old uh, clip tab from a um, trans 330 credit card terminal that I had kicking around that's parts I don't have anything black that I can break at the moment because anything plasticky that would have been disposable like that I would have already thrown away so I had to use this piece chopped it up now this is longer than it's supposed to be just like the other piece was but I needed something to grip onto and you can see where my finger print just kind of imprinted into the uh plastic so I know that's the right plastic this time so once this hardens up I'm gonna chop it so that way it's the right length so it'll it'll take another uh, bit of time to um, get that but in the meantime while that is in the background drying I'm gonna get to the keyboard and start cleaning up those keys and things because they are nasty given the quality of how good the replacement hinges were as far as 3d printing someone could 3d print and model this and make a new one do i want to do it no do i know how to do it no so that's the next best thing is that right there but if someone wanted to hint hint they could get these 3d printed and we can have replacements because i guarantee you i'm not the only one with these broken and the ones that are in the regular P70 are beige, while these are black. But yeah, you can model that. That doesn't look too difficult to do, although I don't know how well that would 3D print. Especially, you, you don't want to get print lines here because it would look crappy. Because it already has natural lines. So I'm assuming you would probably build it up like this, possibly. I don't know but someone wants to do it I also have a theory on how these break anyways because the thing is the screen when the hinges break the front of the screen wants to kick out right and when that happens the only thing stopping the keyboard from just flopping out of there when the hinges break are these so it puts undue stress on these tabs and then snap there they go at least that's that's my theory anyways 
All right, while I'm getting ready to work on the keyboard, this uh, plastic piece had already hardened and it's not falling apart. So, and I've already was able to trim it back to the right length without even breaking and I can just, it's, it's fine. So it just, it's amazing if you actually use the right plastics, bonding similar plastics together. Cause it's the same as welding. You can't weld two dissimilar metals. You're like, you can't weld a, a steel beam to an aluminum frame. You, you, you just can't do that. Well, I say that and someone's probably going to correct me in the comments that you can, but as far as I'm aware, if you can't do that, and it's the same thing with, with bonding, welding plastic, ABS has to go with ABS. So we're good there. It's not perfect, but at least it has a tab now and I can close this. It'll, I'll be able to close the keyboard without it flopping open. So, all right, now we're going to pull all of this apart, clicky. Pull all of this apart and start working on cleaning up the keys because they are absolutely disgusting. So let's work on that. All right. Well, now after some paper towels, cleaning solution, and uh, a, couple, a couple of hours uh, later, we've got the keys all cleaned up. And I used up all of my grease that's in my elbow, so my arm hurts too. So this is all done now. Um, I got the outer shell cleaned. For the most part, um, I can kind of tell this is painted because it's starting to come off a bit. So I have to be careful with using aggressive cleaning on this. But you can kind of see where all the wear marks were where they actually used the key keyboard, which keys were using the most. But uh, that's all cleaned up now, waiting for that stuff to dry off. Then I can start reassembling this. Now, this particular space bar is yellowed, but I think it's the plastic because it's yellowed all the way through. So I don't think anything I can do with this is going to make any difference because it's just reacting to the atmosphere a bit differently. So I'm going to leave it alone. Um, all right. So at this point, we need to just start getting it back together. But yeah, that's gross. This is like one of many towels. The rest of them are in there. And there we go. As long as I didn't put any of the keys in the wrong spot, which I can't guarantee, um, we should be good to go. So I got the sliding mechanisms back in and you see that's all good. We have the thing that sticks out like it's supposed to. Same thing over here. Not perfect, but it works. It'll serve its job. All right, so now we can get this keyboard snapped back together and we can start looking at the computer itself because there's a few things we need to do to that as well. So here's what we got. I think I'm going to do the hard drive just for some sort of semblance of originality. But I also remembered that, well, we got a second IDE channel we can use. I figured, well, in order to easier, easier way to get files on an office system is if we have like an SD card or something. But the problem is he, the, the guy makes a CF card or SD card micro channel thing, but I didn't buy that. However, I have this, which won't fit, but I want to get an SD card. I figured, well, maybe I can put that in there, which means the, the well, let me, let me back step. So I have this, which is an IDE to SD. The problem is this is the laptop version, which doesn't plug in here and I don't have the adapter. So that's not going to work. But I do have this, which won't fit in there properly, but I can take that off and find a spot in here for it. But in order to get that to an SD card, well, I have this, so I put that in there, but then I got to get a micro SD converter because then I have this, which will go into that, and I can stick that thing somewhere around out here. So I got to go from that to that to that to that. Yeah, it's, it's, that's what I have. It's not the best way to do this, but it, it it's cursed computing. Why not? But on top of that, for power, well, because I don't throw anything away, I save these harnesses from dead power supplies, so... I can actually wire that guy straight here, and then I got this splitter, which will give me the Berg for the um, CF card adapter, and then I'll have that for the main hard drive. So, I think we're good to go with that. Now I just got to take all of this and put it in there. 
something like that. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't get this bracket to go in there because it's just, this is too deep and I'm at the very edge and I'm already up against this power supply. And if I try to put that in there, it was, it just, with the gap, it didn't work. So I just put this insulating thing on the bottom of the drive and just kind of shoved it in there. It's tight. It's not going anywhere. And I still should get airflow across it because the vents are up front and the fans back here. So that should stay cool. I got the power cable soldered in place and then snaked down there. And it's in, it's plugged into this Y cable right here, which is going to the Berg connector as well as this drive. So yeah, this is, um, this should do it. And then I have the compact flash adapter just kind of stuck in here right now. And I have the cable snaked out this way up underneath the micro channel card. Because what I'm going to do is put this on Velcro, I think, so I can always take it off when I need to remove the back cover. And then it'll just naturally, like, sit right here on the back cover so I can put an SD card in there. And I should do it. The last thing is this battery holder, which has now got two AAA batteries in it. And what I did was I took a pair of DuPont wires and used those instead of... Um, uh, cutting the original harness down in here so that's just kind of like right there and that is just going to sit in there like that it's a little bit loose I don't know an easier way to do that but for now that's where it's going and that's just a temporary stop gap but I can always return it to stock by shoving the original battery in there if I so choose but in this case I do not so I'm going to leave it alone but for now I'm going to shove you right there like that as a gap. That'll stop that guy from, you know, flying out easily. So there we go. All right. So now we need to, well, attempt to turn this thing on and see what blows up. All right. No more keyboard error. At least I'd hope not. There we go. It didn't quite grab. All right. Computer may need to let's turn that up because I can't see anything. Enter. Maybe. Are you gonna work? Or did you just freeze? Ah. Oh. <laughs> Rebooted. I don't know if that's normal or not. I do not remember. Oh yeah, there we go. One sixty four and one sixty three. Okay. Um, I don't know er what error one sixty four is, but it configured the universal BIOS. It didn't detect anything for my um, card. Probably I don't know why. Probably because there's no SD card in it. But anyway, so. All right, well, let's reboot it. Because I wanted to finish the configuration process here. Which... So what happened here? Let's see. A. What happened here? I don't know, there's crap on the screen. Or it's a scratch or something. I can't really tell. Alright. If you have installed or removed memory, it's the automatically configure the system. There we go.
All right. Let's see what it does. Two oh one error. Okay. Don't know what that is, because I don't have the code book. But yeah, let me figure all of this out because this video is gonna drag on forever if I don't. I think the RAM I put in there is bad. Because according to this, it shows six K of RAM or six meg of RAM. But it's certainly not counting that. Um yeah might have to remove that ram oh so i spent the last three hours just tinkering with this thing and tinkering with this thing to the point where i was ready to throw it out the window so now it should be good to go um but so i was getting all the weird errors because this ram stick is bad now i thought these are like a half a meg sticks but no these are two megs a piece and this one was defective and it kept throwing an error in diagnostics. So I rotated through the sticks until I found this one. So now it should show up as a four megs of RAM. If this one was good, I'd have six. But that was the first problem. The second problem was right here. So if you, if you look at this, the main hard drive is working on the primary channel. And then my SD card adapter is being seen on the secondary channel, which the SD card is actually in the socket right now. So if I go to the D drive, there it is. Now it's only seeing a 2.1 gigabyte drive, but that's fine. It's there. So, oh, that was such a nightmare because what happened with this was it was only seeing the one drive on the master, but nothing else. So I figured, well, let me rotate through these and none of these mattered. I pulled out some different SD cards. I even pulled this thing out just to see, you know, if it was one of these flash memories, but no, it was fine. It, it worked fine in that. So it wasn't that causing it not to be seen. So then I unplugged the master connection and then took the slave connection, plugged it into the master or the secondary, plugged it into the primary, picked it up. So the secondary channel was not working and I couldn't figure out why the secondary channel was not working. So I figured, okay, well, I'll just go and I'll do master slave. Eh, wrong. Master slave did not work because um, some of these like this one here would pick up as a master or slave with the hard drive set the opposite and it worked fine. This one was master only no matter what, but I could set a slave, but then the SD card adapter master only no slave it would not allow me to pick up a slave so i'm thinking what in the world turns out after fiddling and fiddling and fiddling with it turns out the p70 setup program has um the settings for the bios of course well by default it shuts the secondary ide controller off on this card it's configured to do that and i'm thinking don't so I had to go in there and turn it on, assign it an IRQ. Now my second drive shows up. And I had this thing all ripped apart, put back together, ripped apart, trying different things. And I was even going through this little user manual guide here and I was playing around with these jumper settings and trying to do master slave. It nothing was working. It was so painful. But it works now. It works now. So now we can move on and get some kind of a DOS installed. Also, here's something else to put into perspective. Almost 30 years between the two dates. It's just crazy. Crazy how fast time goes by. Currently making up some IBM version of DOS 5.0 discs. Um, the images that are on WinWorld are 720K, and I don't have any 720K discs handy. So I converted it to a 1.4 meg image, and I'm writing that now. Hopefully, that doesn't cause me any problems. We're going to find out, though.
Done. All right. Will it work? Yes, it does. Reboot. All right. Um, let's grab this because I got to do the next image into the thing. Let's see. Boot from Zip Floppy. Yeah, it does. It's working. Good enough. All right, so we're going to do disk two. Image change format to 1.4 meg, and then we're going to write that disk. All right. There we go. IBM DOS version 5.0. So here we go. We're going to let this do its thing. And we'll be back. Because this video is getting long enough already. All right, DOS is installed, firing up the machine. I've got a mouse, got it all plugged in. So hopefully we got something good going there. All right. PyMim is loaded, IBM DOS is loaded, and here comes, I presume, something. Okay, DOS shell. All right. Don't have a mouse driver, probably because it's not set up, but okay. Uh, now, I'm just going to get Windows installed. Well, this is going pretty swimmingly so far. It's on the middle of disk 5, while disk 6 is being written by that. So I've just been writing a disk with each time I've, you know, installed a disk. Sometimes you can get away, if, you, if you're short on floppies, you can just simply use the same floppy disk over and over and over again. It's possible. Let's see, Windows 3.0, this is going to be version, yeah, Win. 3.1 disk 6. But I got a bunch of these Emation oh, data advisor disks I got off eBay. I got a big pack of these things for like 20 bucks. I figured why not. And it's been a few years since I bought these. So hopefully here in a second we'll get the disk message. But I think disk 6 only contains the printer drivers. I could be wrong. And I'm not going to use a printer with this thing because I don't own one that'll work with a parallel port. Because who wants to print out a bunch of papers? I certainly don't. Part of the retro experience, sure, but not something I'm super interested in. Except maybe the printer banner, but I got an image writer for that. But yay, the mouse works. Now, the interesting thing is, I don't think the PS2 port on this machine was ever used because it was extremely difficult to get this mouse to plug in there. And there's no marks on the port where people have fiddled with it. So I don't think the PS2 port was ever used on this machine. So whatever it did in the past, it didn't need a mouse to accomplish that task. No printer attached. Oh yes, I remember this. This brings back a lot of memories. MS dot yes. Alright, 
we don't need a tutorial and then we'll reboot all right windows should be good to go at least we hope anyways Is it going to run DOS shell or is it going to run Windows? Looks like it's going to run DOS shell. I got to modify the auto exec back, but oh, there we go. Well, that's cute. In black and white. Alrighty then, let's see. I don't know what it's using for colors. Windows default. Yeah, I think it's just in actual black and white mode. I don't know. I'm going to leave that alone. All right, so we'll just leave that alone for now. Everything's good. So we're going to go ahead and uh, conclude that. So we got to start working on the back of the machine now. And getting this thing put back together. All right, so now that the machine basically works we got windows on it and we're pretty much done with that we need to start wrapping this up so i went through my screw miscellaneous screw bin and i got the standoffs for all of these now they're not exactly the same but it's what i have and it holds this down so that's in there now this is still extremely tight and it's very hard to get a mouse plugged into there um so i'll figure that out later but this i don't think I'm going to tape that down but I might velcro that down onto the back side but so now that just brings the back cover so clearly we have a problem we're missing the door so what are we going to do about that through the magic of video editing and parts machines we have a door now it's the wrong color obviously but also this tab is broken um, what I'm probably going to have to do for that is I think what I might have to do is that there's on this case somewhere. There we go. I might be able to take this and snap it off and glue it there to try to create some sort of, um, something I don't know yet. Um, but I'm going to have to get me a, I don't have it right now, but I'm going to have to get me a can of spray paint for this. Because this is painted anyways, you can tell. Where there's scratches, you see, you see the white undercoating. So, I'm going to have to figure out what paint this actually is. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be exactly, but if I can figure that out, then I can actually spray this and compare and contrast and all of that stuff but that won't be in this video because i don't have those materials on hand however what will be is i'm going to take this door for now i just want to get this thing put together so i'm going to take this door even though it's going to look out of place get this off cleaned up and then see what i can do about this broken latch that holds it in and there we go it ain't perfect but we at least have a door now so i just got to figure out a me mechanism because i was i took a piece of plastic off the old one anyways it won't fit in here it's too big it's too thick this is a smaller and skinnier piece that used to be there so i don't know how I'm going to do that yet. I don't know if there's some 3D printing that can be done to make a replacement latch. I think what I'm probably going to have to do is take like a little piece of double sided tape or something and just kind of like stick it. But I don't know. And also the SD card is right there. All I got to do is get a piece of Velcro and just kind of like put it right there because I think that would work out perfect. Because I can get to the SD card and I can, and it almost looks like it belongs, sort of. Or I can probably push it back here, but it's harder to get to. I can do it like that, but I think it sticks up too far. So I think it's better off just right there. 
Maybe even... Hmm. Might have to play with that. See if I can sneak this out some, fold it, and put it right here. I don't know. But I think for now, I'll just put it right there. That'll work perfect. And that'll allow me to get files on and off the system fairly easily. And I think that's going to do it. I think that's going to do it for this little machine. Clean the back of it off already. It's got a little bit of scratches, but it's good. And that's the hideaway for the plug. And then this hides all the ports. But that's it. So let me go find some tape and see what we got going on here. See if I can do something with that. I think that's going to do it for this video. The P70, otherwise known as the GE Fanuc Workmaster 2, is working perfectly. It's keeping the settings because of the battery modification I've done. Windows is running. I went ahead and did the uh, back cover, which I'm still looking for spray paint for that. Um, I just got a little piece of sticky tape here to hold it in so it doesn't go anywhere. Got my SD card mounted there. Everything's good. So I can just shut it back and just touch the tape. And it just barely grabs it. It's not enough to keep it stuck there permanently. It stops the door from flying open. So that's what I got for now. And I think I'm going to call it for this video. If you have a comment, please feel free to leave one. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and all of that fun stuff. And until next time, guys, thank you for watching.